What's up guys? In this video it's time to explain Damn it. Currently filming from the jungle in Borneo. Well actually not the jungle yet, but we will go into the jungle in the next three days. So really excited about that. But before that I want to shoot the video and get some editing done. So for you guys I thought this time I'll make a video about the things I've learned when I started entrepreneuring. Uh, it's been around three to four months right now and I've learned a lot. I made a lot of mistakes and I'll show it to you guys in a minute. But before we go into it, you're watching The Entrepreneur and this channel is all about making money online. I'm trying to do that myself and I'll document my process uh, as I go. So if you're interested in how I make money online, how I do it to see my successes, but also my failures, because you can learn from that, then make sure to subscribe. Uh, but without further ado, let's jump into this video. All right, so the first thing which was a huge mistake that I made, uh, I think maybe the first two months of doing entrepreneurship is shiny object syndrome. And you might have heard of this, but it's actually exactly as it sounds. You see something, it shines so pretty. So what do you want to do with it? You want to go to it, you want to see it, you want to touch it. Well, the same is with business. Uh, when you're just starting, you have so much energy and you want to do everything. So every new thing you learn and that comes up across your path, you want to jump into. And I had, to, had the same thing. I started out with a blog uh, because I wanted to do affiliate marketing there. I started out with Amazon FBA. I started out with Shopify. And then besides that, I tried to run this YouTube channel and I tried to run Facebook and it's just too much. And my tip number one is to focus. Uh, currently, I'm, I, I've, I've got rid of the blog post because it was too much work. Currently just focusing on Amazon FBA and personal branding those are the two main focus points and once i started focusing i started gaining more revenue i started gaining more uh, followers it, it just went way easier so please avoid shiny object syndrome because i think every entrepreneur starts out with it but you just don't have to get stuck with it for a long time because it will just hurt your business the second thing which I told you I'm busy with, but uh, I started out a few weeks ago with personal branding and personal branding, basically a summary of what it is. You start documenting everything you do and you start uh, creating like a following who like to follow you and like to see the stuff that you make. So uh, I actually only started with YouTube. And as you guys know, I travel a lot currently. And I think the first, three months of YouTube, I haven't posted a single video of my life of traveling and working. And uh, I also didn't do anything on Instagram. I didn't show you guys my stories or uh, what I did during the day. And once I started doing this, which was like two weeks ago, I started to gaining massive amounts of views, uh, massive amounts of, of comments, of replies. So. And it wasn't even that extra work because I just document what I do and it's just not much work and it's working so well. So my tip number two is to really invest into personal branding and start documenting what you do because it's not extra work and it's so valuable. So do it. The third tip I can give to you, which I did a lot at the start, is that I was overthinking everything. Uh, for example, take Amazon FBA. I took so long to find a good product and I kept thinking like, okay, is this the perfect logo? Is this the perfect name? Uh, is this the perfect product? And maybe I want something else. And I just got stuck in there for too long. And what I've learned is you just got to start and you got to figure the things out once you, you get along. So it's good to think about stuff and to think about what is a good product and what is, what is not. But just jump into it and start learning on the way because you lose a lot of time if you don't do that. And my advice, just do it, don't overthink. And besides, in the end, you will figure out that the things that used to worry you maybe aren't that big of a problem. So make sure you don't overthink. 
Number four, and it's basically just a travel related issue I had, but it might be important to you too to have it. But at the start, I didn't have a buffer of content. And as you know, I make YouTube videos, I had a blog, uh, I, I have to post Instagram posts uh, every time. And it would have been so much easier if I had some buffer. So a few videos, a few uh, photos, which I had in the scheduler for the times that if I didn't have time to work on anything or I didn't have good Wi-Fi, I could just use my buffer so you can upload consistently, you know? And now I just, uh, I didn't have a big buffer. And because of that, I felt in a rush to create something sometimes. And therefore I couldn't enjoy some locations more. So if I had a buffer and I would be somewhere on an amazing beach and I would, would have wanted to enjoy that, then I would have used my buffer and just enjoyed it, you know, so I didn't have to put that work into it at that time. So buffer is always good. What programs can you use? I personally use buffer. It's a bit ironic, but yes, because buffer is an amazing tool to apply those, uh, upload on social media and to schedule your post. And it's actually free uh, up to a certain amount. Uh, for me, it's still free. So uh, it's a really good tool. So check it out. I'll leave a link below and uh, good luck. <laughs> the fifth tip I can give to you is to read relevant articles or books or news items because at the beginning, I was so busy with doing and just throwing myself in there and start to learn a lot, which was really good for me because I got shit done very fast. But a couple of months ago, I started reading relevant books as well and started watching a lot of YouTube videos that were related to my field uh, of work. And because I read those books, such as Crushing It from uh, Gary V or The 4-Hour Workweek, you get so much insights, which will really help you develop new business ideas. Uh, it just helped me a lot. So I would recommend jump at least like one hour a day uh, consuming content and start learning because it really helps you. And especially books really help me very well. I personally use uh, Audible. It's audiobooks. I discovered that reading is just not the thing for me. I store information in my head way easier uh, when I hear things. So I use Audible. Uh, I'll leave a link below as well. It's a very cheap uh, platform of Amazon, of course. I'm an Amazon uh, junkie, but uh, it's a really good tool and you get like one audiobook a month and it's, it's just really awesome. So uh, I would recommend to you to check it out uh, and also just use YouTube because YouTube is free and you can consume so much data. Number six is Kind of something that a lot of people maybe already know, but a lot of people also don't know. Uh, what I hear from people who start business, uh, they try to find an easy way to earn money. And what I got to tell you is there is no easy way to get money. You always need to hustle. You always need to work your damn ass off. Uh, I, I figured out that uh, in the times where I booked my most successes, were in the times where I worked my ass off. So, and at the times where I was relaxing a bit more on the beach, I saw that in my results. So to get success, you need to hustle and don't just think that it comes easy to you. You have to work so freaking hard, but you know, it doesn't feel like work when it's your passion. So make sure that you love doing what you do, find a niche that you're really excited about and then it doesn't feel like work, but hustle. Number seven of the lessons I've learned is to surround yourself with the people who understand you. I know that there are a lot of viewers of this YouTube video who are expecting me to fail, who are actually waiting for me to fail. If you focus on those people, because it will be a lot of people who think that, like, what are you doing? You have no subscribers, you have no following. Um, if you focus on these people, it can bump you bump you out and there are also a lot of people who are supporting me and they understand that I'm doing what I love most so I rather focus on those people and I would recommend this to you guys as well surround yourself with people who get it and then you'll be much more effective much more happier and that reflects on your work so definitely do that and fuck the haters number eight <laughs> number eight is freaking out too soon what I mean by this when you start out, you're insecure as fuck. So what do you do when you're insecure? You keep watching every comment, every like, 
uh, monitoring every view on YouTube uh, and you do this every like 15 minutes or maybe even every five minutes because you really want to know if things work. What that creates is that you'll start to freak out once you don't have as much likes as you used to have and you start to think about, oh, was this content bad? Was this a bad timing? What did I do, you know? What I discovered is that you shouldn't freak out because usually it could be something holiday related or uh, it was just coincidence that people all at once didn't uh, went on Instagram for, for a second or something. So my advice, don't freak out too soon. Only freak out when it's consistently. If, if you like uh, for one month didn't gain as much likes as you used to have, then you might freak out a bit, but then try to change your content. But really don't freak out if like the past free videos or free posts or whatever you do, uh, don't have as much engagement because you'll see in the end, your fourth or fifth post will pick up again and you'll see that you didn't have anything to worry about. So don't freak out. Also an example, which I have, I received an email of Amazon FBA that I should remove my listing. And that freaked me out so much because I invested so much money into it. But what turns out, I freaked out. So I messaged them and I was like, I couldn't think the whole day because I was like, what the fuck is going on? But what turned out, I had to remove one product of the 500 products I had. So if I didn't freak out, I wouldn't have to worry. And there was nothing to be freaked out of. So that's an example. Just don't freak out. Just wait it out and you'll be okay. Number nine is to stay updated. What do I mean by this? Keep following the news, which is relevant for your business. As you might know, I made a huge change. I started investing a lot of time in Instagram. And the only reason for this is that a new update has gone by. Maybe you know it. It's called Instagram TV. And Instagram TV might be the new YouTube and YouTube might die. That's it. It's a possibility. If I didn't read this news and I would go on with YouTube and YouTube turned out to be dead, I would be screwed. So keep following the news and start adapting your business to this news. You can see that I did it. I invest a lot of time in, in Instagram. By the way, if you're interested in following my Instagram, click on the link below because I'll need new followers and I'm investing a lot of time of it. And you can also follow me on my travel journey, which you might like. But yeah, try to stay updated and try to adapt your business around this. If this means that you have to go straight 180 degrees the other uh, way around, that might be a possibility, but you wouldn't know if there's no news and you would find out too late and you'll just ruin your business. So stay updated. So the last tip I can give to you is analytics. What do I mean by this? Of course, analytics, but I invested a lot of money into advertising, Facebook advertising, Google AdWords, everything. There are a lot of campaigns who didn't give me a lot of money, didn't give me profits, didn't give me likes, but still it's not failing. And why? You can use the data you had to create new campaigns. For example, if I had a campaign uh, focused on like 100 keywords on Google. Your analytics can show you which 10 or 20 keywords were converting for you. And maybe the other 80 didn't convert, but now in your new campaign, you can only focus on the 20 ones that converted. So spending money, actually losing money on uh, advertising or anything is good once you have analytics. So make use of analytics. It's really important and it can really boost your business. So make sure to do that. And with that, we've came to the end of this video, but I would like to give one more bonus tip. I'm, I'm generous today. One more bonus tip is to subscribe to this page because you can follow my whole journey through making money online. And if you're interested in making money online, then definitely subscribe because I'll post weekly videos about this subject. Also make sure to give a like, also make sure to comment because this can really boost my business. And if my business gets boosted, you get better content. So make sure to do that. I'll see you guys in the next video.